day has been really great because what it's done is given us a wide range of topics around the digital area, looking at data, content, communities, infrastructure, which is essentially what we're working in and how that work now interacts with audiences and what the shifts are there. I want you to start thinking about what the value is that you're getting out of all this effort that you're putting into developing your content online and even the initiatives that you're taking yourself by putting money into SEO, say, and stuff. One of the biggest challenges for arts and cultural content isn't really a challenge, but it's more of like a fun puzzle, and it's how to bring people into the content to begin with. Because when it comes to what people click online and are searching for, sometimes it's very specific. But when you want to start talking about history and art and these bigger concepts, how do you get people in the door? Once they're there, they will be really entertained and they'll love it. But how do you get them there in the first place? On a global network with a huge reach, you find the audience based on just being yourself. Reasons why bands are fair. I'm Dan, I am known in the internet as Dan is not on fire, and I am a professional video blogger. I don't like interacting with other humans. Okay, I'm gonna be clear, I am not saying this is a good thing. I am not trying to be cool like some stoic badass anime character that doesn't have time for losers. It's reasons why Dan's a fail, okay? It's a bad thing. The way that I've kept this audience and it's grown and people keep coming back to watch my videos is very much the way that I have established a community around the people that watch my videos and also interacting with them. And because I engage with them, they find what I do quite sincere and engaging, so they want to keep coming back to me. The potential of the technology sectors and the cultural sectors working together I think is huge. Um, not only in terms of tapping into things like social media networks, finding new platforms, making their content more accessible online and just allowing people to see the treasures that the sectors hold I think is, is huge. I think today is partly about helping people understand how audiences find you online and how increasingly that's not so much what you do as an organisation but how you're talked about amongst your audience. That really defines nowadays how people find your culture. One of the big opportunities of the last two days and one of the reasons why we're so keen to put on this conference is that we want everyone to think that the internet is for them and the truth is the internet is for everyone. I mean the internet is not some foreign country or other planet, it's the same people that come to your organisations, the same people that are looking for you in real life, it's just the internet is where they happen to be so I would encourage everyone to, uh, to take part in, in the work that the Arts Council and Creative England and Culture24 are doing and, and get online and just try it for yourself. So what I've really enjoyed about today, it's got a real good TED style feel to it. It's really good to get a real mix of different people from different areas and different backgrounds. And certainly coming as a director from the art sector, it's really invigorating to see and to hear and to converse with people who are coming at things from different angles, but we're all kind of solving the same kind of stuff. And that's really one of the key things about all of this, but it's the mix of people in this environment I think is working incredibly well. I found today really great. I thought that the Google Analytics people are really useful in terms of giving tools and techniques and just kind of opening up Google Analytics for us all. It can help you answer questions like, how are users discovering my content? Are they actually sharing it on social networks? Are the subscribers spreading the word out there on social networks? Michael Stevens was great. Cool science videos that obviously get a huge audience. And I really liked how he was saying, that it's not always about looking at users, it's about creating great content that people will then want to come to. You know, you can't always give people what they say they want. Sometimes that innovative thinking is actually where the good stuff lies. Because the content online is very much on demand and globally available, it's not competitive in the sense of, well, if I choose to watch this content, I'm not watching this. Instead, when people find other things similar to what you make, they're actually more primed and ready to start watching your content. And that's very exciting and it's allowed me to reach out and grow really quickly by collaborating. You're just looking at what someone else has posted in your Twitter stream or you're just you know, looking at a YouTube video and you accidentally stumble across something else. And I think one of the things that I most love about arts and culture is the way it just takes your curiosity on little journeys and you end up being really interested in things that you didn't even expect to at the start of that journey. We can't imagine what it's going to be like in two years' time for arts organisations, actually. The biggest challenge is to have the imagination to think about what's possible and then to have the courage to follow those imaginative thoughts. We've all got something to learn, but I think we should have the courage to, to take the plunge 
and see what happens. I think the key challenge with digital is that it's not seen as a derivative of a live experience and we've got to interrogate what a digital experience, cultural experience is for an audience and we've got to ensure that that cultural experience is just as meaningful, just as intimate, just as amazing as a live experience. Yeah.